a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. We're going to take a look at software ETFs now with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra. And um, I found this to be a very interesting characterization. Software is eating the world, mm -hmm, right? That's mm -hmm. not your characterization, though. It's uh, someone else's. But you yes. do agree with that. Yes. So in 2011, Mark Andreessen, who was the co-founder of, who is the co-founder of venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz, mm -hmm. he wrote this very famous essay, and it was published in the Wall Street Journal, uh, Why Software is Eating the World. <laughs> and he wrote about these software companies. Uh, he, say, he said that these internet companies, they are, they are building real high growth, high margin, highly defensible businesses. Mm. And he kind of predicted that software companies will take over wide areas of the economy. And that trend has accelerated since then. Yeah. Software companies have actually taken over wide areas of the economy and software is still eating the world. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be abating anytime soon. Sure, uh, particularly in later stages of business cycle, uh, when you know wages start rising, which we have seen of mm -hmm. late, and capa capacity utilization also rises, then companies tend to spend a lot more on uh, automation in mm. order to increase productivity and in fact, according to IDC, global corporate spending on software and services is predicted to increase by 6.2% in 2018, and which is the highest rate since 2007. Wow. And uh, according to State Street Spider estimates, uh, the industry software and services is uh, expected to continue to post double-digit growth in 2018 mm -hmm. and also uh, you know do much better than the broader market next year and the ETFs which are focused on software and services companies they have been doing really well over the past few years and this year as well so you brought some examples of some of these ETFs with you. Mm -hmm. Are these the only ones that exist? They are more. The, uh, we are taking a look at the three most popular software ETFs. So as the trend accelerates mm -hmm. year over year going forward, mm -hmm. do you see more of these types of ETFs sure. coming online? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sponsors, they try to come out with more products in some of the hotter areas. So we, we may see more variations mm -hmm. of these ETFs, but these are the best performing, most popular ETFs as of now right in now. this space. All right, let's take a look at them. Uh, the first one is iShares North American Tech Software ETF. The ticker is IGV, and as you would notice from North American over there, it holds U.S. and Canadian mm -hmm. companies as well, although the exposure to Canada is pretty small because most of the companies, soft, software companies, they are headquartered in the U.S. It is pretty popular with uh, AUM of 2.2 billion. Uh, expense ratio is 47 basis points. It's up about 29% year to date. It's a market cap weighted ETF and it's currently a Zacks rank 2 buy rated ETF and uh, you can look at further details of this ETF by going to iShares website using the link on zax.com quote page for IGV. So you can look at other details including uh, what it holds by going to the portfolio tab and you will see that Salesforce is the largest holding with 9.2 percent weight Microsoft uh, is about 9 percent Adobe is also about 9 percent all these companies have been doing really well and that explains the performance of this ETF Okay. And then you have the Invesco Dynamic Software ETF. Mm -hmm. So this is a smart beta ETF. Uh, it uses a quantitative model to okay. select and weight companies. It holds about 30 U.S. software companies 
uh, AUM is about 301 million. And it is actually the most expensive of the three that we are discussing today because of the quant smart beta uh, yes. methodology. It charges 63 basis points for expenses, but it is also the best performing. Uh, it is up about 36% this year. And again, like earlier, you can go to uh, the code page. This is also a ZAX rank 2 ETF, and uh, you can look at uh, other details by going to the external homepage, uh, Invesco's homepage for this ETF, and you can look at the portfolio. Uh, uh, you will not see very familiar companies. Uh, some familiar companies, but there are other which are not too familiar. And as you can see that uh, the weights are different from the earlier one because this uses a different methodology into it, uh, software, uh, Salesforce, Adobe, Microsoft, which were in the earlier ETF, those appear here too, but uh, a different weighting methodology. Okay. And then finally, the Spider S&P Software and Services ETF. Uh, so the ticker is XSW. Uh, this is an equal weighted ETF, so it holds companies' holdings in almost equal weights. Mm. Uh, this is also the cheapest. It has expense ratio of 35 basis points. AUM is 139 million, and this is this has also done very well. It is up about 32 uh, percent this year. And equal weighting means that it has more exposure, uh, it has more tilt towards smaller and mid-sized companies, uh, which makes it slightly riskier, mm. but also uh, it, that results in better performance this year because smaller companies have been doing better, domestically focused companies have been doing better this year. Mm -hmm. And to look at uh, this ETF, you can again go to zax.com code page. This is also a number two rank ETF. You can read the articles that we have published on this ETF and you can also go to the external home page, look at the details and portfolio holdings. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is an equal weighted ETF. All the companies, uh, all holdings are in almost equal weight. Again, we see some of the uh, familiar names, some not too familiar, Paycom, Square. Bottom line technologies, uh, Paylo City. Uh, so uh, some of these companies have done really well. Square, I know, has been, uh, you know, uh, done, has, it, it has sold this year. So that is why this ETF is up uh, about 32% year to date. And on the last slide, mm -hmm. we have the comparative performance of these three ETFs that we discussed. And I have compared that with the broader market ETF, SPY. So as uh, we, we saw earlier, uh, the Invesco product, the Smart Beta ETF, is up about 36%. The market cap weighted uh, ETF is up about 29% and the equal weighted ETF is up about 32% this year, whereas uh, the S&P 500 index is up just about 8% year to date. All right. So these are definitely something to look at. Yeah. Do you own either of these? I do not. Okay. Thanks for the information. Don't forget, always more ETF information on our website, zax.com. Go to the home page, use the funds tab in the top toolbar. It'll help guide you right to that section. And also don't forget that Nina does an ETF podcast that you can find on our website. That is on the podcast page. To get there, just go down to the bottom of the home page and it'll say podcasts. And just click right on that. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.